How does it feel to be sitting here at Oriel Park as the new head coach of the Dundalk FC? Yeah, first and foremost, I'm delighted to be back. Um, second answer to your question, great pride um, to come back here. You know, obviously playing for, for years here and having such successful times with, with the club and with the supporters. Um, it's good to get the last sort of week, 10 days, couple of weeks out of the way um, after such a high of, of winning the cup final, you know, and such a great occasion, a great spectacle. I'm um, delighted now to be looking forward to be here and uh, getting ready, you know, the work starts now, I suppose. Um, you know, we're, we're ready to get down to business and get cracking and, you know, we're going to have to be busy because it's not long till, till pre-season starts. Yeah. You mentioned that yourself about winning the cup with Pats. You finished as runners-up this season. Two very successful years at Richmond Park. You said in your statement that you released last week, it must have been a very tough decision to leave. Yeah, well, unbelievably tough decision. Um, you know, it's such a rapport with the with the staff and the players um, and the club. I think the, the supporters had a real connection with the team last year, especially last year they saw a team that were willing to work hard, willing to fight, um, a real honest team that they could connect with and, you know, coming second in the league and then culminating and probably in arguably my proudest day in football um, in the Aviva last Sunday week of the 28th, you know, and, and winning in such a manner on penalties. It was a huge wrench to leave and a huge decision to leave, but one that I, I didn't take lightly, um, but a decision now that transpired that I'm delighted to have made and, um, you know, really looking forward to it. What was it that sort of made you decide this is the, the right time to go back there? Is yeah, I think, um, you know, obviously, not only did I play for the club, I lived in the town, I, I knew a lot of the people, a lot of the people knew me, a lot of the supporters, I know the connect between the club and the supporters, I know the scope when there's a buy-in from the whole town towards the club, you know, the, the whole form and the whole humour I find and the mood of the town, uh, the club has a lot to, dic uh, to do with that, dictating that, you know, and the club are going well, the town is going well, everybody's in good form, I witnessed that first hand, as I said, I lived there, so there's a huge connect there and, and there's massive scope when you have a, a football crazy town like Dundalk and you have, you're the club and you're the sort of epitome of everyone goes there on a Friday night, how is the town getting on, how are the team doing, that's the talk of it, there's massive potential there and I just felt it was too big of an opportunity with, with the emotional attachment I had, with the connection I have, with the, the scope I see in the club, um, I just felt, you know, I, I couldn't turn it down, that, that opportunity, as I said, it wasn't an easy, easy decision, but one I'm delighted I've made and I just can't wait to get cracking now. club's obviously under new ownership, you know Andy Conley well from your, your previous time here as a player? Yeah, definitely. I've known Andy, Andy and Martin very well, you know, from my first spell here. Um, you know, great man, you know, had great times, didn't get, didn't get tried to get too involved in the football side of it. Obviously, Stephen done most of that, but Andy was always anything you needed, anything any of the players needed, anything the club needed. He was always there to help and, you know, I think he had a great time as well overseeing it and hopefully we're looking to bring some good times back, back to the club. Cleared away by Morrissey. Back again it comes, it's Tao. Tao. And O'Donnell! And Stephen O'Donnell breaks the deadlock. Coming out of the second row to rifle the shot home. And the returning captain, back after six months out with injury, scores the goal that puts the dock back on top of the table. And we've also got, obviously, stat sports involved as well. I think everybody's genuinely excited to see what Alan Clark and Sean O'Connor and their company can bring to the table. Yeah, exactly. I haven't spoken to the spoken to the to the boys. You know, they're they're really excited too. It's their first venture, obviously, into into um, into owning a club. But I suppose the difference is, you know, they're from the town. They know what it's all about. They know what it means to people. And um, the boat live not far from the town, so so they're going to live it. They're going to be entrenched in it, and uh, you know, exciting time. Um, really exciting time. Obviously, everyone knows the size of the company that is that sports. And the growth that's there, and um, so you know, having spoken to the spoken to the lads, everyone's really excited and, and can't wait to get going and, and work in unison and everyone want to work together for for the good of this brilliant football club. To describe it as a long term project, as a as a coach, is that that the kind of thing you like to hear? I just don't. I don't think you can. You know, obviously, there's you know, we're starting late. Um, obviously, we've lost a lot of players. Um, you can never put a time frame on on a project, but it is, what would you call it, a reboot, a, re, a, a restart, um, you know, without a shadow of a doubt, but, you know, the, the restart doesn't have to be that long, you know, there's still, 
the potentially a core group of some very good players and if we can add to that you know you will have a competitive squad but you know we are starting late in the day in that regard and, and there there is work to be done without a shadow of a doubt with with the amount of players that have left and the quality of players that have left but um really looking forward to it's still the potential of as i said to keep lots of really really good players and add to that with some some really really good players um but once everyone's realistic to to the expectations and that but i think in football you're always a little bit a little bit silly to put to put exact time frames on things you don't know how how the game moves and how fast it moves it's almost three years since he interviewed you in the ydc when you announced your retirement and it's just over two since you left Dundalk. From being on the outside during that time, what have you what have you made looking looking back at it? Yeah, obviously I've not been privy to anything really. I'm just literally yeah, I'm looking from the outside to uh, in. But I suppose last year I suppose was a little bit of a little bit of hurt in regards. Probably didn't realise that maybe it would affect me as much as it did in regards seeing the place as I said where you lived, where where you played, where you had such great times. You know, seeing it going through the tribulations and probably a lot of it being been drawn out in the media and in the public domain. So um, there was definitely that little element of, you know, like a lot of the stuff that was kind of built there in regards sort of getting taken away bit by bit. And, you know, the connection to, to the town and to the people sort of being, being broken. You know, there was that little bit of, I suppose, little bit of hurt. But... Um, we're looking to piece all that back together um, and there definitely will be that connection back with with the people because ultimately that's the the lifeblood of, of the club is the connection with the town and everyone rowing in behind it and you know everyone looking forward to Fridays and cheering on their hometown. I think that was the great thing about that team that you were, you were a part of was that everybody in the town felt associated with it. You know, everybody felt everybody was in it together. Yeah, without a shadow of a doubt, you know, and the, the players fed off that massively. You know, we, we probably had 10 or 11 players that lived in the town um, in, in different accommodation. And without a doubt, uh, you know, people coming up com complimenting them and, and, you know, saying great game last Friday and chatting. And even for the supporters to be able to interact with the players, everyone fed off it and everyone felt like they knew each other. And the supporters were going up, seeing boys play and seeing boys probably carry out dreams of playing in Europa Leagues of winning three titles on the spin, winning FEI Cups and then they'd see them the next day, you know, walking through the marshes or whatever, you know, it was a great time. Um, you know, it was fairy tale stuff in regards sort of where we came from and what we achieved. Um, but there was definitely that connection of the players just being lads you would see day to day and then they're going out onto the pitch and as I said, playing Europa League group stages. So I think it was a great connection both sides of it, but without a doubt, you can't underestimate how much the, the players fed off the supporters as well of, and being complimented and being praised. And, you know, it made it definitely made them feel 10 foot tall, you know. You mentioned the culture that was built up and it sort of hurts you looking in from the outside. I'm sure that's something you'd be really hoping to recreate when you, when you get, get to work. Yeah, well, that's the biggest thing a, a club is built on is culture. Um, you see all the successful teams. Even at the top level, all of them have good cultures. You know, you know by the way they play, by the way they carry themselves. Um, you know, they all have good cultures, and that comes from within teams, players driving it themselves in the dressing room. Um, and you, when you're there's, when you're sort of on the management staff or the coaching staff, you know, a good culture is you don't have to be on a, a, everyone every day or every, any individual every day. That drives itself in the dressing room, and that's what a culture is all about. And that's that's the key to creating successful teams or teams that you want to evolve and go and go and be successful. You got to have a good culture. If you don't have a good culture, talent won't get you. Ta talent won't get you anywhere. It's all about culture. And then when you mix that in with decent talent, then you have a chance of being successful. I think everybody could see your football philosophy and the the field that pats over the the past two seasons. Are we going to hopefully see more of that here? At yeah, without doubt. Um, you know, want to play on the front foot. Want to have want supporters coming to games and being excited about what they're going to view. Uh, first and foremost, want supporters coming to games and having no doubt about the effort players are putting in or about the effort the team is putting in that they can leave. Every team can have a mediocre to poor game, but once supporters know that every individual that takes the pitch is trying as damnedest, I think they'll accept that. And once you get that over a period of time, you have a chance of being successful. But definitely we want to take the game to teams um, obviously personnel will have a big impact on how you go about it in regards to shape and, and tactics but um, you know we want, we want to make Oriel Park 
a cauldron. I, I know what it's like when it does be hopping, when it's a full house. I know what the shed's like when it's bouncing. And you have teams pinned in and they can't get out. I know that feeling. Um, and I want to sort of bring them, bring them nights back. Um, as I said, it's going to take a little bit of time. We're starting from, from, from not scratch. We still have a good, very good core, but we need to add to that. And obviously, pre-season's not that far away, so there'll be plenty of work trying to be done in the next few weeks. Free kick then for Dundalk, aimed in the general direction of Stephen O'Donnell. O'Donnell's header, it's found the mark, and that's it. Dundalk will be in the cup final, and boy does he celebrate. The Dundalk captain in front of the Dundalk supporters. After the semi-final in Richmond Park, when our fans were sort of kept in, to give you a wonderful reception when you were going to do your media work after the game, I'm sure that sort of meant a lot. Yeah, it was huge, you know, after being beaten in the cup semi-final, probably the last sort of little thing. Uh, the team or the club had to play for and such a big crowd and then you come out 20-30 minutes it would have been easy for for the supporters to be a little bit bitter and a little bit pissed off but um, to give me that reception and to be honest I wasn't really surprised because you know I would always hold the Dundalk um, supporters in that regard I've always found them to be to be very loyal and very good to other players as well that past players that have maybe come back and played they've been brilliant and um, it was without a doubt. It sort of took me back a little bit, but when I thought about it, then you know, it's 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 everything I would expect of them. You know, just being classy and 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 um, you know, it was a great touch. I suppose it was more for probably my family that were there. They were they were sort of you know what a, what a touch, and and they were delighted with that. So, um, but I, we've always had a great rapport with each other um, as a player and as supporters, and that's what I. We, you know, there's a potential there on tap potential. There's not many supporters that are like that, or clubs that are like that, where it's it's everything, it's everything to the people, and you know, for potential players and and the current players, they don't they don't get that everywhere. So, um, it's a huge huge area to be tapped into. There was a great line from Andy Conley when I spoke to him a couple of weeks ago. He described the town as a magnet. He said, once you get in, it's hard to sort of get away from it. It's it's. It sucks you back in a couple of years, probably a couple of years earlier than we ever thought. Without a doubt, you know, uh, ultimately, I probably when I was a player, I was close to retiring. I came to Dundalk, not wanting to go to Dundalk, to be honest, in regards, but it was a means to an end. Probably I needed to earn earn a living, and then, you know, the story unfolded, and um, it does um, just have a real connect, uh, even coming back the odd time when I'd be visiting buddies or that coming into the town. Straight away, it brings you back to memories when you were playing there and when, when you were living here. So, um, there definitely is that that probably you don't have at any other club in regards just an emotional attachment to connect and and memories and you know, um, but you can't live off memories. You got to go and create your own future, create your own path. Us, us as a club, and that's what we're planning to do. Just finally, it's two weeks to Christmas. Can we expect a lot of activity over there? Yeah, well, as I said, we're we're starting a little bit later, but. Um, you know, there's a lot of good players um, out there, so we're, we're, we're going to try our damnedest, that's for sure. And no stone will be left unturned, and it's a challenge we're really looking forward to. I can't wait to get cracking, um, and it's going to be it's going to be exciting now. Um, really, I'm looking forward to it, getting back in pre-season early January, and then before you know it, the season will be upon us. So our challenge is get the, get the squad in as good a shape, get the personnel in. You know that will play to our ideology and yeah, take it from there. But it definitely will be a good, fun ride. Very best of luck to you. Thanks, a million, Gab. Thank you.